so you wanted to bridge you don't want to wave your flame back and forth there's a tendency where the uh, even that's a failure on the education part you don't see me doing this at all that flame is small enough and the material thickness is small enough that as soon as I bring it down onto the surface it's instantly melting within the three seconds okay the joint is so narrow that the width of that flame let's say there you have a 10 thou gap that flame is a 16 to 332 wide so I'm already naturally wider than my joint so I don't have to do this that's for operator error okay you'll notice that I will push them once I have the molten puddle on maybe on one side I'll push the puddle that's why you have a leading angle you want to push in the direction you're going okay so you'll notice that it sucked right up I'm ready to go So I'm going to go just a little bit closer than the end of the heat zone. And this last one I'm going to have to nail pretty quick. some shrink right there initially okay so anytime that you're talking and not paying attention your flame licks your joint or off the joint that's the cause that's the effect okay so it's put some previous shrink in there which raised that panel up and I know enough that I'm gonna lead this one down slightly and dolly the two together okay but that only comes with a couple hours experience <laughs> okay and this here bending was it actually shrunk maybe just a little bit too much I should have went over to the dolly but I'm naturally lazy so and we all are. So we'll look on the back side this is where a lot of guys fail. They uh, they don't take the oxide off the back. Okay, that oxide burns off somewhere around 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit. This material starts to melt around 1,800. So what's happening is what you think is the puddles creating a small little puddle like that but in fact your heat affected zone is huge just to get that little puddle going there because you're you're not thinking about the oxide and the surface that was impregnated with some not nice stuff let's leave it at that okay so other than me stopping and starting and chatting along that uniform it looks fairly uniform okay so let's say you stop and go for lunch or whatever this is what you have to contend with and there's going to be a little bit more working in that area when you come back okay because you've got it already preheated now you got to spend an extra second and a half to bring heat and that temper back up to temperature you'll also notice that 
when i first said you don't tack here and tack here and tack here because just stopping and starting you can see the difference in material and how much shrinking and less shrinkage there will be okay and you know that was just freshly welded and, and i can hang on to the panel now okay and it looks fairly straight if you look at it straight down okay i'm not so worried about the alignment here because that's going to be dollied out what i'm more worried about is the consistent heat doesn't make this panel do that so when you're welding on a quarter panel and you've here's the part of the body of the car and you're attaching the quarter panel you're manipulating this piece okay what you don't want to happen is put a big wave into the main structure of the car and that's what will happen if you hop around and do not with not uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for not methodical tax will cause you grief later on okay. alignment of the panel is very critical so I'm going to take my hand dolly right now and realign that area yeah. so I'm going to try and hit on the tax themselves okay, to line that panel back up Because all the heat affected zone comes back down to the point where it's actually fused. Okay, so it's the tack itself that has physically shrunk, not the material beside it. So you have to stretch the tack only as best you can. Okay, all right. Okay, you'll notice that I'm coming in, I'm not going like this. I'm just rolling my wrist and rolling the torch to get in that direction. Okay. Now I always keep the filler rod handy just in case I have a little oops like that. So right now I've got too much volume for me to, to weld that. torch around a little bit over Terry time sitting there or did you just change the I may have hit it. Oh. Yeah. And you're trying to go in between the last welds, right? I'm starting right on the tack and pushing right through everything. Oh okay, so you're gonna just keep going right through. Yeah. So this goes to uh, show you a butt joint that is a little bit more um, efforts required. When you do a tipped edge, this whole bottom edge, bottom edge to bottom edge is already exposed. I'd be twice as far along right now. Because you don't have to worry as much uh, about the penetration? That's correct. Because two leading edges exposed melts faster than a surface, than a square edge. So always keep an eye on where your wrist is. You notice I had to drop my wrist a little bit because I'm moving forward. And as guys breathe through our chest, you have to be a little bit more adverse and breathe through your diaphragm so your arm doesn't go up and down. Now, is that typical the way you do? You can weld on through a solid weld like that? Always. 
do the, the do one all inch your tax, do all your alignment, mm -hmm. wire brush, get happy, relaxed and do relax it. and go. And if mummy calls for supper, you'll be there in a minute. Heat affected zone looks fairly even. Okay. The other thing, when you have a good neutral flame, that puddle looks three dimensional. It has some depth to it and almost looks clear. Okay. If you have a carburizing flame, it's black. You physically can't see the, the carbon going into it. It looks more gray, it's opaque color. Okay. And, and you can't see any depth to it. And if it's an oxidizing flame, it'll start to sparkle right away. That's your clear indicator you have the incorrect flame. You can kind of get away with a carburizing flame. You can't get away with an oxidizing flame. It just, it won't make a good joint. And the tall tail sign on the back side on an oxidizing flame is you'll have huge, huge amount of uh, oxide big heavy flakes. Okay. So again, it looks fairly consistent all the way along there. It should planish out pretty good and that is almost